Hello and welcome to a Unity tutorial for top-down simple, well, it's simple 2D top-down basic movement. Um, it's going to be looking kind of like this by the time we're done with it. So stick around if you want to see how we do this. This also includes a little bit of how to do Cinemachine and how to do camera follow. All right, real quick before the video starts, I want to take you all to hell. We have a loving community, everyone is incredibly welcoming, and we have a great mod base. Like, yeah, what are you waiting for? Come on, join up, enjoy the warm heat of the fires, and remember, welcome the hell, kiddos. So let's say you just opened up Unity, and this is kind of what you're going to be seeing when you first open up Unity. The only difference is I put a player object inside of the thing. So the way you do that, you just right click, go to, go to like create 2D object, click sprite, and you just rename it player. Okay, that's like all I did. So currently we have this and then i gave them the sprite the knob sprite right here which if you want to do that you just click this little little button right here next to sprite it's like a little circle and then you click uh, the old knob icon and bam you got a well it's a player icon kind of um so anyway so how do we get this thing to move well first off we're gonna want to click on our player here click add component and we're just going to name our script that we're going to add and we're going to do movement that's what we're going to call it and we're just going to click create and add and then what it's going to do is it's going to add a script down here and then the script should get added straight to the player object oh, there it is and then we also want to make sure that we give him a rigid body 2d um so just click add component type in rigid body 2d and give them that so what a rigid body is it's basically like a physics object thing for unity it's like a it's like a built-in physics system and it uses it so our um thing is going to be you or our movement thing is going to be using this um make sure you turn your gravity scale to zero because we don't want this thing to fall off the screen like this here i'll start it and show you guys just uh our circle guys is going to kind of fall yep there he goes <laughs> so yeah you want to make sure you turn that to zero and um, after that, that's actually pretty much all we need to do for basic movement. So with that said, let's just open up our script. All you have to do is either double click right here or you can double click this right here and it'll do the same thing. And it'll open up Visual Studio or whatever your programming editor is. So here we are. Okay, we got Visual Studio opened and we're going to do our programming stuff quick. So what we can do is we can type in a serialized field. Okay, serialized field is basically just making a private variable open or like editable in the inspector if you wanted to be extremely extremely basic on it we can just do public and then we just do float and speed now a float is basically a, it's just a number but it can become a decimal okay an integer or an int is just a number that cannot be a decimal that's that's all it basically is um so we have a public float speed then we also want to have a public rigid body 2d and we're gonna, gonna call it rb okay so we just created a float variable called speed and a rigid body 2d variable called rigid body or rb and um, we're gonna want to make an awake method which is a built-in unity method it's called just before the start function is every because when you click uh play the uh editor goes through and it's like hey we're going to call all the awake method stuff on all the game objects in the game and then it calls all of the start function stuff okay and the awake one is useful for getting things like components off of the local game object so we can do it like rigid body equals get component and then rigid oh, fuck. Uh, rigid body 2d there we go bam okay so this in this with this right here we're getting the component on the current object which is the uh let me just get unity open here so the current object is the player okay and it's going to get this component right here that's basically what that's doing. We can either drag in this rigid body into this thing and then the get component thing is just kind of useless or we can make this a private variable like this and then what you're going to see is the little slot here disappears. Okay, so when it's private, you can't edit it in this inspector and if it's public, you can edit it in the inspector. Okay, but of a little fun fact is if you do something called a serialized field, which I explained earlier, just like that and then all of a sudden you will see it pop up right here as editable in the inspector so that's a very useful thing for a lot of reasons but um we'll just keep it simple for now and we're just going to keep it private um so let's get component thing will get us the component for that stuff now we can delete this start method because we don't actually need the start method but what we do need to add in is a fixed update 
method because this is going to get run every time the physics update gets updated okay update gets called every frame which is going to be useful for something that we're just about to do right now actually we're going to create a vector 2 okay technically you don't need to create a vector 2 we could just make two floats but i'm going to do a vector 2 just because it's useful and we're going to call this movement now what a vector 2 is, is if you're not familiar with mathematics, a vector 2 is basically where there's, you got an X and a Y. Okay, it's like on a grid. Um, there's also a vector 3 and a vector 4, but a vector 3 is X, Y, Z. Okay, that's basically what it is. If you're familiar with mathematics, you'll be familiar with that. Um, so what we can do here is it just stores two floats. It just stores two floats. Uh, that's all it really is. So we can do a movement dot x okay because we're going to want to get the player's input right here so we can do input dot get axis raw and then we do horizontal now the reason why I, okay this is going to look a little confusing the reason why is because horizontal is a built-in unity function so if you do input dot get axis raw horizontal it's a like a custom built-in axis that unity has um you can actually go change it in the editor itself but i'm not going to get into that but um Basically what it does is it checks for the horizontal on the arrow keys and the horizontal on the WASD keys and on controllers. So it's actually usable across a lot of things. Um, another thing we have to add in is a movement.y because we have to get the y axis. So we just do input dot get axis raw and then we just do a uh, vertical. Oh God, there we go, vertical. <laughs> okay, so now we have the two movement things. So now what we can do is go in the fixed update and this is where we have to do something called normalizing. Now I can show you why afterwards. Okay, I'll show you why afterwards. But normalizing basically just makes it so it has a magnitude of one. The reason why this is useful is because otherwise your character will be going extremely fast at diagonals, and he'll go be going the normal speed at like perfect, like perfect, like vertical or horizontal movements. So diagonals will become super fast. Some games in the past have made that mistake. I will show you what I mean in in some time here, but. So now what we have to do is adjust the speed of our character. So we can do our, our rigid body, and then we do dot to access the new thing, and do velocity equals, and then at this point we do a new vector 2. We can do movement dot x, because we're in the x coordinate of this new vector 2 right here, and then we multiply that by our speed, which is up here, which we set in the inspector. Then we also have to multiply it by something called time dot fixed delta time. Okay, I'll explain that reasoning why in a second, but let's quickly do the movement.y as well. We'll just do the same thing we just did. And there we go. And that's all we have to do. So now we should be able to have movement. Okay, and let's just give it a shot and I'll explain why this works in a second. Um, we're going to want to set our speed to something like 500. Okay, that should be probably fine. And let's just save our scene to make sure it's all fine. And let's click play. We should be able to see our player move around. Yep, there he goes. He's moving around. We have some top-down 2D basic movement right there. Boom. Okay, so how does this really work? Well, we have our speed, okay, which you set in the inspector, and we have our rigid body, which is our physics body. Okay, so now, when we hit the WASD keys, or the arrow keys, our, our movement variables get set inside the movement vectors, okay? So we got the X coordinate, which is getting set, or the X like thing is getting set, and so is the Y, based on what we press every frame. and then every fixed update frame, it applies a velocity to our rigid body, which is equal to whatever we pressed times the speed, which would be 500, and then times the time step. Now, what this time dot fixed delta time is, it's basically, in really basic terms, it's just the, the time between each frame. That's all it really is, because the reason why that's useful is because it stops things from being frame rate dependent. So if someone was running at like 30 frames per second and they didn't have this variable thing here, then the movement would be probably a lot faster than what it should be. Whereas when you have this variable in here, it'll be basically the normal speed across all systems. So you're going to want that. Um, now, I'm going to show you what I mean by when you move diagonal, it's super fast without normalizing it. So we're just going to comment that out. And we're going to go back. So now, if I move side to side, okay, it looks kind of normal. But then when I do this, see how it's like super, super fast? So like, yep, okay, here, well, it goes normal here. And I hit diagonal, see how it's like super, super un unnormally fast. Like, okay. So the reason why that is happening is because the magnitude is be not being normalized, okay, basically. And when it's normalized, it stops that from happening. 
That's basically all you really need to know. But um, with all this done, so now that you have top-down movement, we gotta do the quick camera. So luckily, Unity has a fancy little tool that you can actually add to your project. You scope the window up here and you click Project Manager, or Project Manager, Package Manager, sorry. And once you get that open, you'll see a bunch of stuff pop up here. Um, if you don't see all these projects, make sure you click all projects right here. And I think that's all you really need to do. Yeah, yep, yep, just all projects. And then it'll show you a list of stuff. Okay, there's a bunch of fancy stuff in here. But the one thing we need is this, if you scroll down, you find Cinemachine. Okay, this is like a built-in camera asset that you can get and just click, uh, it, it should say import here if you don't have it. So just click import, just click that, it'll it'll install Cinemachine. And once that's done, you'll have a little tab up here called Cinemachine. And with that, you can just cl click uh, create virtual camera and it'll create like what looks like a camera object and it'll also edit your current camera object, which as you can see has like a little Cinemachine brain on it and some other stuff. And in here, you got a bunch of fancy stuff here. So what you're going to want to do is change this body little thing here. Okay, you're going to change the body. Change that to framing transposer. The reason why is because you want it to focus on your person. And at this point, you can probably uh, go over here to your player and just drag him into the follow target here. And that will make the camera follow the player. Uh, you're going to want to turn aim off to do nothing because aiming is not important. And actually, at this point, I think we're ready. We can edit a bunch of a bunch of stuff. You can even see like the guides for stuff like that. But we're not gonna we're not worrying about that. We just want a camera that follows the player. So here we go. Let's just see and make sure it works. And indeed it does. As you can see, it is following us around perfectly fine. There's no stuttering going on, which happens with a lot of different camera things. Depending on how you do the player movement, there's many different ways to do it. Sometimes the cinema machine doesn't like it and it'll like stutter around. But as you can see, it's not stuttering. It's moving just fine. But anyway. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I really hope it helped you guys out. Leave a like and subscribe to see more. And I will see you in the next episode of Unity. Goodbye. Come on.